I try, oh baby, baby. <laughs> All right, guys, she's getting ready to join me live. Give us just a second. Hey, go, Nadia, go, Nadia. <laughs> Yay! Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing so great. I was just telling everybody. <laughs> well, let me introduce myself. My name is Chastity. I am the host of the Midnight Love Edition page. This is a homage to Midnight Love BET. They used to come on back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wanted to come out and just support you and just introduce uh, you. Um, this is the 10-year veteran. Congratulations, Miss Dondria. Yay. Thank you. Thank Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining my You're a singer, songwriter. <laughs> Girl, you got it locked. <laughs> I'm so yeah. proud. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. So thank you. So before we get into it, I want to start off the game. Okay. So the break let, me put, let me put my phone on Do Not Disturb. Hold on. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to cut mine off too because that's what my best friend I said, you know, she went out on a date. So I was like, go ahead and go. I gotta have my people. I gotta support my girl. <laughs> okay. So yes, yes. ma'am. We're gonna start off with an icebreaker. So before we start off with our interview, I want to do an icebreaker. You know, just to ease it off, just to have a good time and just celebrate your beautiful first album that I so much that I grew up listening to when I was in college. <laughs> I was like 20 years old when your album dropped. So congratulations. But I want to do an icebreaker with you called Dondria versus Fat. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of okay. see what like and what you are interested in with your subs we know fat fat is like your thing because we know you love food <laughs> so we just want really? to work that out <laughs> yeah so okay. my first um two questions i have for you the first one is going to be whitney houston or mariah carey whitney mm, that's yeah that's easy you call whitney your mom that's my mama, that's my mama. <laughs> yes. you know that's what i have okay hey, i have something to tell you Okay. Um, from back in the day, this uh, show called Fanatic. You remember uh, the show back in on MTV called Fanatic? Fanatic. I, I think so. Okay. So back in the day, MTV used to have where these fans used to have the, like the biggest fans used to go see their favorite um, celebrity. Um, Q. Um, I don't know if you remember her episode when Whitney Houston um, had uh, Quincy Q come mm -hmm. and see her uh, favorite. Favorite idol Whitney Houston. She actually wanted me to enter uh to interview you. So she was one of the ones that, um, I don't know if cry, but yeah, she was the one. She was like, Girl, you gotta enter uh do an interview with Dodger. So she is like a big, big Whitney Houston fan, and I guess she might have known you might be a Whitney Houston fan. So yes. she was one of the ones who wanted me to interview you and know uh, just celebrate you and Arnie. Um, I just want you. I was gonna wait to the end, but I was like, nah, since we're talking about Whitney right now, I was like yeah. well, <laughs> yes that's so sweet no no problem my next one is gonna be okay it's like a fat fat uh fat fat choice like chipotle or papa john's pizza chipotle i figured that yeah yeah, yeah. I, you know i you know I, I currently live in texas right now and i never ate chipotle until i moved down here oh yeah but i know okay. <laughs> i'm from okay. louisiana I'm like a raging cajun girl so i just eat like okay a, like Cajun food, so when I had Chipotle, I love it though. I'm not gonna lie, it's good. It's really, really it's good. It's just, and you know, some people be hating because it's it's technically not like you know authentic right. Mexican, but it's good. It is good. It's good. I like the bowl. I like you know. I'm trying to be like a little vegan, but I like my little meat every now and then. So I got okay. in there. <laughs> yes, I noticed you like Chipotle. Chipotle is one of your favorite things. Love it, it. Chipotle. Love it. I, I guess I had gotten onto Chipotle like literally when it first mm -hmm. came out. So um, I was in high school and we were like, I don't know, we was riding and I saw something called Chipotle. We went like after a choir performance or something, we went to Chipotle. Right. And I was just so like taken aback that this, like, where did this come from? You know, so fast forward um, to me getting signed and stuff, Chipotle, yeah. um, I don't know. If y'all know or not, but Chipotle like sponsored You're the One, my video. Oh, oh no. Um, I did not know that. They uh catered lunch for everybody. They Aww. gave me like free Chipotle for a whole year. Like it was rude. <laughs> yes, Chipotle Queen. <laughs> yes. 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 But yeah, Lily and, and like when I moved down to Texas, I really had Chipotle. So I really like it. It's really good. It's authentic to me. It's better than Taco Bell. So I mean it's definitely better than Taco Bell. Definitely better. So, I mean, I like it. 
like Chipotle. I just like the lettuce and stuff. It's just really good. But I just wanted to uh, see if you want to say Chipotle or Papa John's pizza. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, next one. It's like a Dondria. Um, is it going to be You're the One or Saving Myself? Oh, I'm going to go with You're the One. I'm going to go with You're the One. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, just, I mean... I don't know. I feel like you're the one. It's just more mm -hmm. of a classic. Yeah. And when I recorded "Saving Myself," I had, that wasn't really true. So mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> just, I'm going to one. I love <laughs> "Saving Myself." When I heard it, you know what's crazy? I like the "Where Did We Go Wrong." That's my mm -hmm. favorite from you. That's mm -hmm. my favorite. So where did mm -hmm. we go wrong and save myself? Were like my two favorites, but I love "You're the One" because back in college, like I told you, girl, we were jamming at back at school so when we that, that song dropped girl we all went crazy so yes but yes. i love i love saving myself i just like it's a beautiful purity type of song and i guess my name chastity kind of means it that way mm -hmm. so I, when i listen to saving myself i like it the way i think the times we're in right now we need a lot of songs like that especially yeah. for the generation we're in right now with social media being like such a huge kind of track for people to look up to mm -hmm. songs like I say to myself, we need a lot of girls to listen. To. I love saving myself. Hey, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Maybe I should have definitely better. Sure. Okay, so next one I have Donja Duets one or Donja Duets three. I'm gonna I'm go. I'm gonna go with three. That's my two. I'm gonna go with three. You know, girl, I'm obsessed with three. I'm obsessed with three. I love Three girl, when you drop them cover, them cover uh Dondre's mixtapes, girl, I played them all the time. My favorite one by you, to be honest with you, is uh Where I Wanna Be, uh the cover version you did with mm -hmm. the baby. I got my whole life. <laughs> yes. I, that one and you killed the other one I like that um I don't think I put it on here. It was um Trey Songs um Made to Be Together, killed it. Oh Kill yeah, that was, that was, you did a way you. better response than him. I was like, yes, way better. <laughs> I loved it. I, yeah. Thank you. My jam, girl. I played that all the time. My The Donnie Zest 3, that's my favorite, favorite, favorite. I love it. Love it so much. Yay, thank you. No problem. The next one we have, okay, we know you like this group a lot. We know you love Destiny Child, but I picked one Destiny Child song. Destiny Child, yup. <laughs> you can't pick both because I know you. You love Destiny's Child, but you got to pick one. It's going to be either Tell Me or Birthday. Oh, oh Tell Me. I'll figure that. Yeah, Tell Me. <laughs> girl, I got so much going on. Huh? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Girl, we're going we gonna, to we gonna have some mess up. We're going to have some fun. we just going to have a good, good time. <laughs> it's definitely, it's Tell Me all day, every day. Like, I was singing that. If they, in like middle school, they'd be like, Dondria, sing a song. I always went to Tell Me. Like, that yep. was... Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful song. I actually um I'm a, also a huge Destiny Shaw fan. One of my favorite, favorite groups. And my favorite, favorite ballad by Destiny Shaw has to be um off that second album called Stay or Temptations. Ooh, that's a good one. I yeah. Too, so I really like that. Really like, tell me. I had to listen to that this morning. I was like, ooh, this is kind of give people their feelings. Look. <laughs> tell me hey. you don't love me anymore. Just Tell me oh, if you don't care about me anymore. Yes. That's my jam. Girl, you need to remake. Can you do a couple songs of that, please? <laughs> I, might, I might need to do that. Yeah. I might need to do that. You do. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, you, kill, you kill me all the time. I'm killing it. Okay, the next one we got um, singing or songwriting? Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> Um, mm. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm gonna go with singing. Okay. Only because with singing, I can sing anything and like mm -hmm. directly touch somebody. Yes, you do. With the with the writing, it take a while before it reach. You mm -hmm. know, it takes a while before it finally gets to the people. Right. Right. So, right. That's the only reason why. Right, because I you love people. songwriting too. Heartbeat, so it don't take you that long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dang, yeah. that was a hard one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got another one. Uh, Papados or Razoos? Papados. Okay, I figured that because you're from Texas, so I knew that. Texas. Yeah, I don't even know if I've ever had. I don't know if I've ever had Razoos. You never had Razoos? I don't think so. Oh, wow. I thought I 
thought you had residue. Well, I don't know if they got it because I know you currently live in Atlanta, correct? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I thought you had a residue kind of nationwide. So I was assuming that you had one of the residues. No, I. If I went to residues, it had it had to have been. It had to have been in Texas. Okay. Yeah, it's in Texas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's in Texas. When did I have been to Okay, I think I've only been to Razoo like one time. Okay. I can't I can't even remember. I think I had some <laughs> some alligator something. I don't know. Girl, alligator's good. Long time ago. That's really good. <laughs> okay, we got another one. Okay, this one. Ooh, Dondre, look, don't get mad at me. Look, but I really, really want you to choose these two. But I really, really love you. Gotta pick one. We got Brian Michael Cox or John Tay Austin. God. <laughs> oh. Why would you do that? Okay. Um, love them. I know how much you can. I know how much you have so much respect for them, but you gotta pick one. <laughs> or I'm gonna give you a okay. pass. You slide to both. I gotta pick both because they like that's. Mm -mm. You said no. Oh, you like? Uh -uh. <laughs> She's like, I'm not touching it. I mean, gonna... if I got to. I'll, I'll say B. Cox, but that's only because we both from Texas. True. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's the homie. But I, 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 could, I couldn't pick. They both are so amazing. And yeah. they both so cool. Like, personality-wise right. and talent, they're just, they're both just so amazing. They are. They are. They're talented and talented. And I remember John did the versus battle. Girl, I didn't even. Yes. I, yes, I forgot he did We Belong Together. My sister was obsessed with that song. Girl, she got on my everlasting nerves with that song. So, Man. he put his hands on that. Um, he touched that, you know, back in the day. when. Mm -hmm. So, he's really, really like a big, big thing. Like, he's a beast. Yeah, he's a beast. Yes. But Brian Michael Cox, I love him, too. I would pick him because he is from Texas, you know, down south thing. Yeah. But when it's he like, burn it's, my song. I guess with B. Cox, mm -hmm. I, I grew up with his work, like That's, listening to his work. Said, me and too. then Jante, as I got into the industry, I learned so much about him that I had no idea he touched. So right. it's like, it's that's hard. That's hard. I know. Yeah. I had to make you choose. Look, I ain't say Jermaine Dupree. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was about to put him in that category. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I had to uh, let you pick one of those. And then I have two more. Okay. Um, I have bowling or skating. Dang. Okay, I'm gonna go with bowling. Bowling. Okay. Go I, can, bowling. I can't see you skating. I, I can see you like bowling and stuff. Like you have fun more bowling than skating. You know, I mean, I like skating, but I I can't really skate. So right. <laughs> you know, it's just I'm just out there because somebody invited me. But bowling, I could do that all day. Okay, yeah. bowling. Yeah, that's right. And my last one I have for you for Nandra versus the Fat Fat game we just played: skydiving or bungee jumping. Skydiving. Skydiving. Have you ever been yeah. skydiving? No, but I'm going. Me you and going? my mom. Me and okay. my mom are going. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm scared of heights. I can't. I can't do it. No, indeed, no. I can't do it. Uh, uh no. <laughs> no. It's just right. something about. I mean, they both scary. Right, right. But it's something about skydiving that just mm -hmm. seems so free to me. That's and true. Then when I was talking to my mama about it, and she said mm -hmm. she wanted to do it too, mm -hmm. I was like, oh. We're doing this. Okay. So, yeah. We're doing it. I'm trying to do it before the year is up, but I don't know because, you know, COVID. Yeah, because of COVID. Yeah, because of everything yeah. going on. Speaking about everything, how have you been holding up since the COVID and stuff been happening? The pandemic? Um, it's been kind of, I mean, it's been good and bad. Yeah. Um, just having to, like, you know, quarantine and be away from people and not live normal life like you don't really know how it's going to affect you until you're right. in it and um i saw um i was watching terrell grice um, oh okay. yeah yeah i know he was doing um one of his episodes and he had mentioned that he didn't realize like how much it was going to affect him like he thought he was just going to be at home watching movies yeah you know but just i guess you don't know until you don't have a choice yeah um how it's gonna affect you so it part of it on top of all of the social injustice and the racial injustice that's been going on it was a lot yeah um, and i had to like get off social media and yeah. find something to kind of like uplift my spirits exactly um, but on the other side it has allowed me to really like 
do a lot of introspection mm -hmm. and um and really like create some amazing things like i cannot wait for you guys to hear the stuff that i've been able I'm to like, create because it's really forced me to just you know like go within and really yeah. like make music that make music of what i'm feeling yeah exactly <laughs> They say sometimes when you're in a quiet space, you know, that's the best way you can come up with the best ideas. And so mm -hmm. right now, because of the pandemic, it's kind of showing us what we can really handle, what, what is really made of us. And so for me, yeah. I'm like, Dondria, I'm like, you're, you're dope. And so, and so I noticed, um, I was on your thing the other day, and I see you had did a cover of my favorite single, Brandy, Waterline. Baby, I caught chills. I was like, yes. Yay. Thank yes. you. That's coming. That's coming really, really soon. That's coming really <laughs> Do that cover song too because girl you have a voice on you your voice does you have a voice that's really um i noticed i was uh, reading an article on rudders they say your voice is like beyonce mixed with coco from swb so to get that sound of that. that i can definitely see that because you have that texas type of rmbs that south southern type mm -hmm. but you know having somebody like a coco from swb that's big that's really huge yeah so yeah. i would say john tape um a long time ago he mm -hmm. mentioned um he paired me with Coco before too, and I, and I was like nineteen at that time, so I was like, "What?" <laughs> but, um, but I appreciate it. Yes, yes, it. girl, you got a voice. Yes. So we're gonna start with our interview from how you got your start, and I know you got your start from YouTube. Um, you're from a small town. I cannot pronounce. Is it Sachet or it's sexy? Sexy. I'm like never like sexy but sexy sexy okay <laughs> yeah sexy texas is it's like is it within dallas or is it just outside yeah. dallas? Well, it's, a, it's a suburb of dallas um okay. it's probably like mm, 20 30 minutes outside of dallas okay okay yeah. so how was it like growing up in um in uh sexy uh texas and like where did you start from r&b and how did you get inspira uh, inspiration from r&b who were your inspirations um growing up in sexy was I mean, a lot of times I was the only black girl or one of the only black wow. girls or students, period. Mm -hmm. um, uh, only two of us on the soccer team, only one of us in the in our little like show choir group, only yeah. a, five of us in the choir. Like it was real, uh, you know, a big mm -hmm. gap. Yep. Um, That's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it it exposed me to a lot of things that I otherwise would not have been exposed to if I had went to a majority um, minority school or um, or black school or whatever. So I, I mean, I just it kind of molded me. You know, you never know what God got going on. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of like look back later and then you be like, hmm. So um, it got me into rock music, pop music, country music. Like it really just opened, you know, my mind to every sound as right. opposed to just R&B or just gospel or just hip hop. So um, that part. And then um, I guess it kind of helped me to early on to deal with standing out. You know, mm -hmm. I, I dimmed my light a lot um, because I just didn't know how I fit in with everybody that didn't look like me and mm -hmm. you know it, it was hard you know and then I still had to you know I still got a black family so I was still in Dallas you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. like in the hood you know with my family mm -hmm. so it I, I was I was trying to figure out how to balance both you know I had to learn that really really early um but it was for the most part it was it was good it, it allowed me to cultivate this gift that God gave me really really early so mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I can say to you as well, because I know growing up for me, um, I always told you I live in Louisiana, but I actually lived in Dallas as well. And okay. Of, um, in the 90s from 2000. So I went back because my mom really got sick. So I moved back to Louisiana when that happened. But um, I can understand because when I went to high school, girl, I wanted to go to all black school myself. But my mom, she always wanted to keep me in a diverse type of, you know, mm -hmm. as so for me, I was like, why? I want to be, you know, with the boys and all I want to get my life. So... <laughs> But I'm so glad she did that for me because it made me adjust. It made me well rounded. So I truly mm -hmm. understand where you're coming from when you're kind of trying to be, you know, in your blackness. Yeah. That you're trying to be in another type of environment to adjust with them. It's kind of hard. So I understand. I remember um, one time in particular, 
I was I was with my white friends and mm -hmm. I said something. I probably like popped my tongue or something like, girl, cuz. <laughs> and they, she literally was like, Donda, why are you talking like that? Like, you know, and I'm like, girl, you know, but it was, it was, it was just, I had to figure out my identity because it was a lot going on, you know, exactly. at, at a young age, it's, you don't really, mm -mm. you know, you don't know who you are. So. Yeah, you yeah. still have to try to find yourself exactly. Who was like your R&B inspiration? I know you said Whitney Houston was one of them. Yeah. Was, I was one of them. Who else, like any male R&B artists that you were looking up to as well? Oh, absolutely. Tank, it was Tank all day, <laughs> every day. Tank was probably, Tank and Destiny's Child were the two that, I mean, they, Tank is where I got all my, like, runs and stuff from, you yeah. know, cause, and me and Broadway, we used to listen to his stuff and rewind it, and, and Destiny Child, too, because Beyonce used to be going. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, That's very, I had so all the Definitely I Tank, um, believe it or not, Jagged Edge, before I even knew that I was even going to know them. Um, wow. I know every album, every everything, Jagged Edge was such a major, like, part, too. And then just gospel music in general. You know, I grew up singing in the church. And so I loved um, everything that uh, Kirk Franklin ever did. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Karen Clark sheared. And then when Kiera sheared came out, that was so amazing because it was somebody my age that was singing right. for the Lord, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a good. And then, of course, you know, Whitney. Whitney, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I love your plethora of um, R&B artists you look up to. And a lot of people don't give Tank a lot of credit. And I'm really happy that you give him a lot of credit for that. Yeah. One of the key, him and Brandy, both of uh, Run and Run, mm -hmm. yeah, they are amazing together. So I'm happy yeah. that you're there. That's, that's amazing. So now we're going in your time where you're starting to get at the scene. So you're in a digital world. Mm -hmm. So with YouTube, you started doing cover songs. And I heard the first cover song that you did was Music Soul Child Love. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like the ones that I heard that I got you. Kind of like your song or your love for singing cover songs. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how did you get discovered? And how did Jermaine Dupri find you? And how did he sign you? <laughs> uh, so when I got on YouTube, I I literally, I just saw somebody on there singing. And I, actually, it was Deanna Dixon, who's a good friend of mine now. I saw her singing on there. And I was like, people sing on here? So I just decided I was gonna sing too like what mm -hmm. and um I just went on there to get an unbiased opinion um yeah. because I was surrounded around which is such a blessing but you know we always want to find something right in the midst of it right so I was surrounded around so many people that were pouring you know praise on me and telling me I had this beautiful voice and oh my gosh you're gonna be a star one day but I just I just didn't believe it you know so I went on YouTube because I was like, okay, strangers are going to tell me the truth. Um, they're going to let me know if I can sing or if I can't. And that's really why I went on there. I did not go on there to get discovered. I did not get on there to get a record deal. I just really wanted people who had no idea who I was and didn't care about hurting my feelings. I wanted to know what they thought. And so um, as I was making these videos and, and they were making more requests and seeing this and seeing this. And I started really getting into it and now I'm eating and, you know, just like really getting into this whole YouTube thing. <laughs> um, uh, the video that I did promised by Sierra, that was the first video to reach a million views. And I think that's the one that really started to get the attention of people like Jermaine Dupree. Um, mm. So, uh, he hit me up on MySpace. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, okay. Talking about MySpace, girl, all on Twitter last night. <laughs> girl, MySpace was... Yeah, yeah. that top so, <laughs> Okay. So um, he hit me up on there, and um, I ended up giving him my information. He called. Uh, I called a few people on three-way to let them hear the voicemail, because I was like, okay, now, is this... I, I just couldn't wrap my mind around this man calling my phone. You know, Neither. so... I called a few people like this sound like him um and it was him and you know we talked and me and my mom went to Atlanta to just talk in further detail about you know what his intentions were and um I got to meet Jagged Edge because they were um releasing their album at the time and 
it was a good experience. And shortly after that, you know, I signed the contract and started working on my album. Wow. You know what I feel? And I'm going to be all honest. I feel like you were the first Soulja Boy. <laughs> you know how they always give him credit for mm -hmm. you? I feel like mm -hmm. you were the first. Like, I really I, do. That part always, like, confuses me because yeah. I, I, I think that he was discovered on MySpace. Like, I think that's... Oh, was it? Okay. I, I think it was MySpace because his was more like his music had blew, but yeah. my videos blew, blew up. Yeah. So they did. um, I think he was on MySpace, but either yeah. or, I know I was the first black girl. Mm -hmm. sure. Yes, you were. Yes, yes, yeah. you were. Um, I was just thinking too as well, like you and you use YouTube as a big platform, and also um, the actress Easter Ray used YouTube as a big platform. I think as black women. You really took your talents and really wanted to show people out and give their honest opinion because you know how YouTube and Mafia, they don't care. They people just want to be unfiltered, you know, just say it like it is and tell like it is. But for you to feel that your peers in the social media world gave you a lot of um, respect, I feel like yourself, that is amazing. So for you to get that, you know, that stamp of approval from Jermaine Dupri to sign you, that was yeah. huge in its own right. I mean... And y'all check this out. I don't even know if y'all know this. Uh oh, But... <laughs> Janet was the one that was like, yeah, you need to go ahead and... Uh... Janet Jackson? Yes. Girl? Yes. You good. You was definitely good. Janet Jackson? Yes. Yes. Girl. I was like... Wow. <laughs> that's... Well, I, yeah. that story. I've never heard that. Wow. <laughs> it's an interview somewhere on the internet. I have been trying to find it for years mm -hmm. because I think when I originally watched it, it was actually live on television. Okay. So I haven't been able to find it online, but she was on a talk show yeah. and she talked about me and she told the lady that, you know, he had seen me on YouTube and she told him like, yeah, go ahead and pick that up. Yeah, that's amazing. That is, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> so with that alone too, you also, um, I noticed when you were getting ready to transition into your first album, you started blogging as well. So I feel like you were the first in blogging too, you know, showing people the journey of how to create, an album, how to produce, how to, mm -hmm. you know, do all this media training for yourself. So you really kind of were like a groundbreaker for a lot of YouTube people for today. So just think about how 14 years later or 15 years later, a long time ago when YouTube wasn't nothing and now mm -hmm. like, people are doing the same formula of your style of how they got discovered. So how do you feel about that as a army artist? Because, you know, army artists, we don't get a lot of, um, praise for being the first and I feel like you being the first is a big thing so for you to take your talents and bring it to YouTube how do you feel about that you know being like a first of your your own kind to see all these new artists now um it, it's one of those things you know it's it's like <laughs> mm -hmm. because you know like you said it's like I did this, I've been doing it I did this first you know yes, so, first. um but the other part of it is like it's it's um it it gives you a sense of like um pride i guess yeah. like because it, <laughs> like <laughs> to just be the first is really really like wow like girl you really and think about all the little black girls that you inspired to yeah get on and do the same thing you know um a lot of my peers who are so talented and that i am grateful to be like friends with they saw me on youtube you know what i mean and it's it's that part really like warms my heart because it's like okay you know i may have had to take the you know because nobody was i mean not nobody i obviously made a name for myself but the the execs and the labels and stuff they wasn't checking for me because they was like you found her where mm. yeah i mean but can she be an artist like they weren't convinced that i could you know move over into the music industry they thought that i was just a cute little girl on youtube so um sometimes i don't know sometimes you got to take the strikes you know so everybody else can you know but i'm still here too, so. Look how everybody's getting discovered. You too. <laughs> so, I mean, but I, I'm, I'm happy. But, you know, at this time, somebody has to be the first to kind of show people what it truly is to kind of be mm -hmm. an amazing singer or just not even just amazing at the end of the day, show that you have talent. So, with yeah. that, 
how was it working with uh, Jermaine Dupri and John T. and Brian Michael Cox when you were in your first, you know, process of your album? Because I noticed with your vlog and stuff, you really, really let people into your life at mm -hmm. a young about how you were starting off in the uh, music business. And I think that was great as well because we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. So you along right yeah. there, how did it feel working with those three iconic producers and just, you know, yeah. how it was with your first album? Um, that was a, a mix of emotions because it was very exciting to yeah. be able to be in the same room as these people yeah. and to record in the same studio that Usher and Mariah and Monica and Janet and Jagged Edge, like all of these people have recorded in this same room, you know? So that part was really exciting. But then there's the, because I got discovered on YouTube and I didn't come from having demos and being in the studio, it was, well, do I belong here? Because mm -hmm. these people have accomplished some amazing things. And I'm just like this little girl off the internet, you know? <laughs> so I had I had that um, questioning of my ability and of my, like, um, my spot, you know, on the team. Right. Um, but as we continue to work and write and um, create this album, it that didn't last long. You know, I, I I quickly saw that I belonged there. You know what I mean? And um, I remember one day, um, JD gave me a beat and he told me to write to it. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this is what y'all supposed to be doing. Y'all supposed to be writing and producing. I'm supposed to be singing. Like, what you mean? <laughs> And I wrote to it, and I was so nervous. I was so nervous, and I brought it back to him. And that song was "Where Did We Go Wrong." Girl, that's and my favorite song. That it's, favorite song. it's most people's favorite song. So yes. it's like, no, I do belong here. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it was, it was a, you know. But um, I have a question about that song. Is the beat? So when I first heard that song drop, it reminds me of "Sammy Come With Me." Did y'all intentionally purpose to do that? Because it sounds just like it to me. It kind of does. Um, no. I don't think that it's not like, it, was a nice response. it was a nice response. It was like, because if you listen to his lyrics, he's talking about somebody that, you know, has been down and out, and you kind of switched it with that. And I'm like, girl, that's a response. Okay. I, like I mean, that. that wasn't intentional, but you know, sometimes <laughs> things just, they just flow. It did. It yeah. was very beautifully. It really did. That's why I was like, this sounded like a response to Sam. When I first heard the beat, I said, oh, this is Sam. And then when I heard you, I was like, wait a minute, that's not Sammy. And I <laughs> was rebuttal because it just sounded just like it. Because when I hear your cover songs, they sound like mm -hmm. responses to the, the, the meaning of the song. So yeah. for me, it was really a rebuttal. I really did. But it was great. <laughs> my favorite. That's my favorite song. Okay. I did. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was completely unintentional. But hey. I was hey. <laughs> It, hey, but sometimes you never know. The greatest songs come from the greatest songwriting. So, I mean, seriously, you did a great job on that. And I just really was just happy. So, you're in the process of doing John Reed versus Fat. So, so, when you drop You're the One, how was your reaction when it became so successful? Do you know that your hometown, Dallas, they um, put you in uh, the end of the year, their songs on um, Top 10 Dallas that you were, no, Top 25. Your song was number 21 of the year, uh, end of the decades for the Top 10. How'd you feel about that? I mean, that it feels amazing because I I didn't and I still don't create mm -hmm. for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right for that. I I just make music that's authentic to whatever is happening. Or, you know, if it's not directly um reflective of my life, it's probably my friends or, you know, my sisters or my brothers. It's something around me is where I pull like my inspiration from so I don't I don't do that I don't go in the studio and be like okay okay we gotta make a hit we gotta we got I just do <laughs> whatever comes out just come out you know so it makes me feel good that being myself and doing what I would normally normally do whether I get paid or not whether I get recognized or not when you do get recognized it feels really good because it's like like that's me you know what yeah. I mean? I'm not acting like I'm somebody I'm not. I'm not saying things that aren't true. Like, it's it's me. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I love the video. The video was my favorite thing because, girl, you killed that vibe. That vibe was nice. When I say you were one of the queen of vibes, baby, you... Ah. 
Molly from Insecure got the best two bobs I've ever seen. Yes, Molly got a good one. <laughs> yes. And yes. when I say you did that, I love the video. I love the black and white. I was kind of surprised y'all didn't go with color. I actually like the black and white. It kind of reminded me of, you know, you know, back in the day, 90s vibes, you know, just mm -hmm. really, really good. And I love ballads, girl, ballads. Yeah. And you just being on the charts with Alicia Keys at that time, Drake, and Usher. Remember, Usher came back, too. I mean, yeah. that, was, too. that was a big, huge R&B album as well. How did you feel alone, you know, now today that I'm being 10 years? Well, last month I made 10 years, but how do you feel 10 years from then to now? That your song, you're the one, is still in uh, replay because I look on Twitter all the time, girl. The, uh, what was it, like three days ago? Somebody was like, "You're the one gonna be played at my wedding." They want you to sing it at their wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, it feels. I mean, it feels so good. It's a blessing. Like, you know, I. It's it's one of them things because you always hear the bad, and if you let the bad be louder, you won't pay attention to the good, right? So. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people I'm always seeing also on Twitter, where's Dondria? What happened to Dondria? You know, she wanted to wonder, like, what happened? Like, what, JD, what you do to Dondria? You know, and then <laughs> it's, oh, you're the one's going to be playing at my wedding, you know. Yep. So I, I definitely focus on the positive um, because something like a wedding, like, that's, that's, that's something that they're never going to forget, you <laughs> know. Um, so, I definitely, and I want to be on that side. You know, I want to be on the side of the music that makes you feel a way that you, no matter how old it is, you want that to be a part of a moment so special for you. Like, exactly. I want to be on that side. So. Yeah, exactly, girl. I'm going to tell you right now, baby, you're the one was in my iPod, baby, on repeat all the time. So, yes. and that time, actually, it was crazy because I was doing a business attorney in college, so I really didn't get to listen to music, but they was telling me about this girl. It was like, girl, they got this girl named Dr. Mary. Like what? And so they was like, "We're gonna play it." So when they played it for me, I was like, I was instantly hooked. I was yes. like, it was beautiful. Like we love, love, love that song. Was girl, I was online for like seven weeks. Girl, I ain't have. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so the first song I listened to was Usher and You. Like y'all were the main two that was really big and down in the spring of sometime. And Alicia Keys as well. I mean, y'all were really hit the start. So for you to be on there, I think that is so beautiful and amazing. For you know, JD to be having his stamps. I'm like, there go his little classics. He killing everything. Mm -hmm. he, he can make a classic now. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Find my socks, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. All of them. Jante, they all, I mean, the three of them, individually and collectively, they just got this sauce that's just like. Right. I I mean, I'm, I'm just grateful to just be, like, attached and affiliated because they also did the song of the decade, Mariah. Yep. Um, I mean, they just, they're just. <laughs> They just got the sauce. You know? <laughs> y'all yeah. can say what y'all want, but they got that classic sauce. Yes, ma'am. They do. So. They do. So I know after the release of your first album, you didn't make a, um, another album after that, but I know you dropped a lot of mixtapes that we've been talking mm -hmm. about. So how did you feel doing your Donnery duets? Like, why did you go in that lane? And then what made you want to do cover songs for R&B? Because it kind of reminds me of what you were kind of doing your YouTube days, like, you know, just doing R&B covers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you dropped the mixtapes. I think that was still great because you were still relevant in our, you know, repertoire. Mm -hmm. you know? Making albums, but for me, I love the mixtapes. Up, three is my favorite. So for me, yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, well, actually, the first one um, was JD's idea. You know, he was oh. like, "You should remix some songs and call it Down Here Duets," and I was like, "Okay." You know, I mean, I just <laughs> um, and so I picked the songs, I wrote the verses, I you know laid it down, we right. put it out. And it was like a thing. So then I was like, okay, well, we gotta keep this going, you know. So um, it's it's pretty. And I always did male songs, male R and B songs. Yes, you did. And you and you and let me say this: you did it way better than them. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but you killed them. Made to be together. That is my Thank number. You. you killed that. I'm Thank sorry. You. <laughs> sorry, Trey. So Nadja did it better. <laughs> Love you, Trey. <laughs> um yeah i just i, I wanted to because i didn't want to make it like this competition thing with yeah. women you know it was already kind of that because people would be like i'm not saying this but people were saying like she's singing her better than the person you know <laughs> and there was one particular artist that i sang her song and she was so salty like she was what? she was so salty <laughs> 
it was so salty and she kind of gave me like a cute little like good job you know but she she right. ain't like she ain't like that um and still to this day she don't really rock with me she, <laughs> but you know it's fine you hey know. um but i i never wanted to do that i just wanted to share my love for music and and start giving responses to what these niggas was saying you know exactly. what i'm saying so um, that's that's how Dondre Duets was came about. Yeah. yeah, and I realized too um, after you started doing it, Chris Brown started doing it. It was like people started doing it. So I'm like, mm -hmm. Dondre, like you really don't get a lot of credit for being the first. But I on my on my um, page, I always give for my people that have been groundbreaking. So for me, like I want you to know that you really, really did do a lot of first. And we recognize, I recognize myself how you really have changed the game. In the 2010s, because at this time we were in a new decade. So for you alone, mm -hmm. you were really preparing like for the new R&B. You were really kind of keeping that yeah. down that I really love, you know, the most because I like, you know, 90. That's my heart. That's my soul. But for you to keep those mixtapes going, you were kind of reminding people of how like we need to stay in this kind of era when it comes to R&B. What we know about yeah. R&B. Yeah. So you're the first to do that too. I had to put that out there, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you really, really did, you know for something like that. I mean, when Chris Brown did his mixtapes, I fell in love with that too. So you really were kind of gaining traction with those mixtapes. So I really like that. So then, um, your body is sick. Your body is amazing. I'm just going to be honest. Oh <laughs> and stuff, because I know you call yourself fat, fat, but I know you work out and stuff like that. Like, what do you do to keep yourself in, you know, in shape and stuff like that? Because for me, you still look the same from back in 2006 to now. So girl, yeah. change. <laughs> And y'all just don't know. I be if you ask any of my friends, I'm always talking about how I'm trying to get thick. And it just it just <laughs> Girl, we want the six packs. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna figure out how to have six packs and be thick. I'm gonna figure it out. But I just I mean, I've always been I've always been active um mm -hmm. since school. You know, I played soccer, I ran track, um no, I was no. a cheerleader for a little, little small little bit. Um but I just was always active, um, and I, I never stopped. I right. never stopped being active. I never stopped doing something, you know. Um, and actually, uh, the pandemic was the first time that I did stop because it was just so much going on, and I was just not motivated to get up and right. work out, and all of this is going on, and I, I just wasn't motivated, so... That's actually the first time that I like literally stopped. But um, I pretty much only drink water as far as that goes. Um, and, you know, a little beverage every now and then. Um, <laughs> um, I am uh, recently vegan. Well, almost a year of being vegan. Um, so that was like a interesting transition. Um, and just, you know, I do. I love going to the gym. I love going to... You know, Stone Mountain, I love working out at the house. I love doing, well, sometimes I do yoga. Like, I just, I just, just like to do something, you right. know, no matter what it is. Sometimes, you know, you got to switch it up because you get bored and you get, yeah. you know, unmotivated. But as long as you're doing something, I think, mm -hmm. you know, you're good. I agree. I agree with you. Like I said, girl, I think the pandemic kind of changed a lot of our lives. Like, this year, I recently lost my father. So, mm -hmm. for me, I had to really do a lot of soul searching within myself. Mm -hmm for me that I need to myself um because when you lose family members it really changes your life and perspective but I think because 2020 is the new year of everything and I want to tell you when you talked about hindsight 2020 gonna still be with me I don't know if you remember that on your lyrics but you said you said I sure did I sure <laughs> so, did 10 years later look where we at right now so mm -hmm. I'm just, that alone right there I understand what you're saying you really got to keep yourself healthy and happy because pandemic it is hard and I think it's just yeah. telling us on how God wants us to be patient but at the same time is we need to find within ourselves what who are we what are we yes. about ourselves and yes. I think about it, especially like I'm still happy that you're still you know, singing doing cover songs because we need that right now is the key to the soul the happiness the heart and you know I'm really happy that you're still maintaining to have a mindset to keep singing because sometimes you know when things happen people are like, they just stop so yeah. me alone right there, I'm just happy that you did it. But my next question is, do you feel R&B is making a comeback? Or R&B is coming full circle and getting the recognition? Because I know you've seen the versus battle with Mark. 
Franny, and you know, I, I'm, I hate to say that I'm gonna be biased because I know you in ATL right now. ATL fans, get on me, but I'm Team Brandy. But I love okay. Monica. Monica's my girl. Yeah. I love her too. But I'm Team Brandy. But as an R&B artist, how do you feel like? Do you feel like it's making a comeback from back then when you were doing it to now? And you know, because Versus is kind of breaking, you know, a big kind of thing with R&B. Or do you think? It's a circle? Um, I think that it's. I think it's making a comeback. Um, I think that when I first entered into this industry, it was just starting to change. Yes. Which is kind of where I got lost in the sauce. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to do this type of R&B. But now this type of R&B is the one that we want to hear. And that's playing on the radio and stuff. And I think that there have been a number of artists that have um, either came in with a new sound and really like, you know, the LMAs and the Kehlani's and, you know, Janae and SZA, like, and her. Mm -hmm. um, they have, I think that they're doing what's authentic to them. You know what I mean? I don't think that they're, they, jumped on a bandwagon and started making music that sounds like everybody else. I think that they're making music that's authentic to them and that's why they're winning. Um, on the other side, that that R&B that you feel down in your soul, yes. um, it, it still has like this underground presence, you know, it's, it's still very successful, it's just not mainstream. Yeah. So now, I think it's making its um, transition back to mainstream, which is really, really exciting. Exactly. I agree with you, too. And I think because we have these verses, like, you got people like, you know, we're kind of like the first to really, like, you know, understand what people like. This is what we want. This is the army that, you know, we fell in love with. Even though, you know, from 70s and 80s, like, we give Gladys Knight and Patty their props, too, because, you mm -hmm. know, to be at the age they still know their music, you know, they yeah. know. Yeah, you know, like I yeah. said, to you, everybody still knows you're the one, so you're the one that's mm -hmm. going to be a timeless record. And yeah. I think with R and B, they want timeless music. And versus to what LMA and you know what, yeah, you brought in, it's a different. Thing. But if it's a class and it's going to stand the test of time, that's something that people. Don't and so for me, I do feel like R and B is coming back. So, but now if you can go back and tell Adonja back in 2010, anything about herself in the music industry, what would you have told her 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. Um, I would have told her to trust herself. Mm -hmm. Um, because like I said, you know, I had many, many moments where I felt intimidated in the room. Mm -hmm. Um, and ideas that I had, I didn't say because I thought people don't think they were dumb or, you know, um, I just sat back and I learned a lot. I learned a lot by sitting back and observing, but I had things to say. I had ideas and things that I could have contributed. You know, I could have gotten more writing credit. You know what I mean? Mm. But I I didn't feel comfortable doing it. You know, I didn't trust that it was a a good um addition to what was going on. So I would tell her to trust herself, you know whatever the things that you're thinking and some of them might not work but you're not gonna know yeah until you try <laughs> until you try it mm -hmm. yeah. i agree and like i said to me like we still love donja versus fat fat because when i look at the album cover and i was thinking today when i looked i said wow donja really was kind of giving a message to where i think you knew where army was going i don't know if you recognize it but your album cover when i look at it it reminds me of like the beginning of how you were discovered but mm -hmm. look at what it means to a lot of people. Like, you use a computer to bring R&B to the forefront. And I think when I see it, I look at, like, okay, you know, she's bringing R&B, but this is how the way she got her start in R&B is using a digital platform. So if you're looking at your, your, your classic out, like, yeah, I was showing. It shows that. Yeah, that's true. Sides, but it's showing that YouTube or digital platform was the way to go at the time. So, and then, the you know, the food and stuff, because you fat fat, so. <laughs> yeah. I had everything on there. I'm hungry now. <laughs> but when I looked at the computer, I was like, wow, she really was kind of telling the story that, you know, digital media is where it was going to be at. And look where we're at right now. <laughs> so, true. I yeah. never really thought about that, but you're right. Yeah. yeah. I looked, I was like, wow, her cover really is groundbreaking. So, and if I had to describe a word of a Dondre versus Fat Fat in one word, it's going to be groundbreaking. So what would you describe your first album? Uh, 
Dang, that's good. Now, listen, <laughs> when you sent this, when I read these questions, I was <laughs> trying to come up with something, and I still don't, I still don't fully know. Right. But I think I would have to say, um, I think I would have to say true. You know, it was, it was. That's a good one. It was somebody true. Thought, somebody to, was authentic. Yeah, it was, it was true to who I was. I was blessed to not have to dress a certain way, sing about certain topics. You know, I, I didn't have to put on a persona. Mm -hmm. It allowed me to be myself. And um, we had a conversation because um, we were just talking about the anniversary and stuff. And mm -hmm. he, he um, let me know that he tried his best to um, allow me to still be in my world mm -hmm. and slowly push me into this new world instead of just being like, here, go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I probably got the last bit of artist development, you know, I, I he really carried me, mm -hmm. you know, into it as opposed to just, you know, so I would have to say true. I would have to say authentic. I, I know a lot of people can't say that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And that's why I said you were like really one of the last Mohicans. So, I mean, yeah. Along, like I said, when 2010 came around, we didn't, I wouldn't say we didn't know where RB was going, but we knew a change was coming. Yeah. <laughs> when your song, You're the One, came, I mean, people went crazy. And Louisiana Girl, we loved that song. Like, we were upset with you. Like, it was so much in heavy rotation. Like, we could never get enough of it. Like I said at the time, yeah. all of this was trying to grab doing that. And when your song popped up, that was the one we like were obsessed with. We was like, yeah, nah. Yeah. He's gonna be the next thing because we just was like we love R&B music and where it's coming from. So I'm just proud of you. But like I said, the first album is really groundbreaking, and that's why I was so happy when you put, you know, where did we go wrong as a video? I'm like, thank you. I'm like, I'm ready for that one. Making love, and I wish no more would have been a single too because I know you use Fifty Cent sample um, mm -hmm. questions, and I was like, I like this. This is like a woman empowerment. Like, yes, we need. It kind of was, yeah. Yes, I, like, I was like, yes, this is just. Dope and amazing. I'm just really proud of you. And you know, you're a 10 year veteran. You're 10 years in the game, girl. You're good. You're good. 10 years. <laughs> 10 years on the scene. 10 years. What you mean? Yes. Yes. Team 10 years. Okay. Trust yes. me. Um, but I do have one more question. Um, yeah, my last question. Do you have any upcoming projects? I'll tell everybody it's like a surprise, but you, I don't know if you want to tell everybody. It's up to you. Oh, yes. You do? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited to say that I'm getting ready to release my second album. <laughs> oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds so crazy because, I mean, from the outside looking in, you know, I'm sure people are like, girl, you should be on like your fifth, sixth album. You know what I mean? But I just, I, I don't know. It just wasn't yeah. time for me to put, everything into a whole entire body of work like exactly I was going through the ebbs and flows of like figuring out who I was and right. you know living life and and moving because I was in Atlanta then I went to LA and I, I just had so much going on and I don't think I knew who I was yet mm -hmm. um so for me to put out an album just to put one out it just I don't know. It just didn't seem right. So, um, so yes, second album, Yay! titled Perspective, <laughs> is coming very, very soon. I'm so excited, and this I can also say is 100% true and mm -hmm. authentic to who I am. The difference is, Fat Fat is most definitely Dondria now. Like so, <laughs> and she in her 30s. So there's a lot more <laughs> life and experience and things that I wanted to make sure that I, you know, put into this music for y'all. So it's coming soon. Yeah, I'm excited. When you, when your management told me that you make albums, I said, wait a minute, what? I, girl, I was like, yes. I'm like, I'm ready. I am so yes. excited. I love yes. making this thing wrong, but I'm just, I'm ready for another album because I think, and don't get me wrong, like, I'm happy you, you took a break because if you felt like you needed a break knowing that you know your craft and the truth, 
do that because look what Brandy did. She took eight years yeah. and created a classic. Mm -hmm. For her to take an eight-year break, you know, people have to really find within themselves, you know, yeah. what they want to talk about, especially true R&B artists. Mm -hmm. You're trying to find out within yourself what are people going through right now? What are, what are the things that we, you know, we're dealing with right now? And I, for you dropping album number two, I know it's going to be some fire. And you finna have, I know you're going to have JD on there. I know you're going to have some people on there. And I, you're, gonna, you're a songwriter, so, you know, your little thing on me on there. I'm like, I'm ready. I'm just, I'm ready for the new music because... To me, um, me and my friend JR, um, he's an R&B presenter. We talk about all the time that we want to see people sing. We want true singers, no, mm -hmm. singers <laughs> with R&B talent and just to bring, you know, the truth. Like, you know, what we love about R&B, what, how do we fall in love with R&B? Like, mm -hmm. us, you know, you're really one of the, you know, the, I hate to say one of the last real R&B artists that I feel in 2010 that really, really brought real authentic music. So I'm just so proud of you, and I'm excited for too, girl, I am just, I'm in like, girl, I'm in there. I'm in I'm there. Too, man. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I don't even know, like, I am in such, I'm in the space that, like, for, for me, this 10-year thing, it's like, it's full circle. So I am, and the way things are happening, it's, it's like my life happening again mm -hmm. the same way. You know, yeah, like exactly. with the same people, you know, like just it's just it's really amazing to experience. And I can't wait to share it with you guys because it's some good music. I ain't gonna lie. It's it's yeah. some right. it's some good stuff. Yeah. Well, they're gonna cut us off in like 45 seconds, darling. Look. Okay. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Congratulations on 10 years. And thank you so much for just interviewing me. And I want to tell you before we do get off the live that you and Issa Ray are really like true pioneers for me because me starting off this page is Midnight Love. I'm just a little old page. I actually used to do a Brandy page. So I've interviewed other, you know, pages, but I really wanted to do this page because I want to be groundbreaking like you, lady. So any 20 got 20 seconds but any last words you want to say to your fans <laughs> uh dondria nicole.com get your anniversary merch i love you guys thank you so much thank you so much congratulations my darling but 10 years in the game keep coming with that fire and like i said let me know when you got that second album ready because i'm i'm here to support you god bless you let you know thank you thank you bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. <laughs>